Hello and welcome to the video. This is a very quick tip about this thing here. This is the Hobby King RC controlled switch. Now I've looked at these before on the channel and they are blooming handy to have about. It means that you can switch things on and off using one of the channels on your radio. And that can be very handy for models like this. Now this is the ZOHD Orbit Neon, which is an update of one of my favorite FPV wings. So easy to fly, it has a stabilizer inside, but this version has lots and lots of LED lights light so you can still add your FPV kit to it. There are interchangeable snap-on fronts to it that means you can put your FPV camera in there. I converted my original one of these that doesn't have the LED lights on with an F35 base flight controller so that has iNav in it but, but this one is more for line of sight flying but one of the things I do want to be able to do is turn the lights on and off and that's where the turnergy switch comes in. So I thought I'd very quickly show you how I'm going to install it into this model so that at the flick of a switch on the radio I can turn it on and off and then if you have a model where you'd like to do something similar you know that it's possible and how to do it. Now the way to think of this RC control switch is it is just like a regular everyday two position switch. So if you wanted to be able to turn on the LED light, then you cut the positive wire and then you'd solder each side of that positive wire to a little rocker switch. And then by flicking that switch on and off, it would connect the LEDs to the battery and they would light. And that's all that this is doing. There's nothing particularly complicated about it. But that means it's really, really versatile. It's small and lightweight, relatively inexpensive. I always like to have a couple of these in the box because you never know what you're going to need them for. The rating of this is 10 amps and up to 30 volts. So this is also a very handy thing to have if you're maybe a scale modeler and you are working on RC cars or trucks where you want things like headlights or indicators or horns or even smoke machines. So long as it pulls less than 10 amps and uses less than 30 volts, you can use these and it's an inexpensive way to set it up. So what I did with mine is I wanted to make this super neat to go inside the plane. So I got myself a couple of GST connectors because that's what is already in the model. So rather than cut any cables, I can just put this in the middle. So then I took the shrink wrap off it. I soldered the JST connectors on like this. It doesn't matter which way round is the input and output. All it's going to do is connect the two outputs together, which is great. Then put the heat shrink back over the top and we're ready to go to the model. So the model itself has these two JST leads inside. One can be used to power the front super bright headlight LED and the other one is used to power the rest of the LEDs underneath and also within the wings. Now the whole system pulls about 600 milliamps. I've tested that already. So we are well below the 10 amp rating of this thing. So to get this to work, we need to set up a channel on the receiver that we're going to plug into. I'm going to set it up for channel 8 and I've just selected a two position switch for channel 8 and that's going to control the on off function for the switch. Next job then is to just unplug the JST connector from the battery connector to the lights in the main body and then to plug in this RC switch from Hobby King. Once that's all done then the next job is to just plug the signal cable into channel 8 on the receiver because that's the one I'm going to flick to control everything. With that all done, and remember, always remove your props if you're doing stuff on the bench, then you can fire it up, and with the flick of a switch, it's all working. So it is that easy. Again, with this particular instance, I've used the JST connectors just so I don't have to cut any wires, but if you have something on your model that you want to be able to turn on and off with the switch, this is by far and away the cheapest and easiest way to do it. So I'll put a link down in the description to my full review of the ZOHD Orbit if you want to have a look at that. And I'll also put a link to me popping an F35 flight controller into the non-neon version of the Orbit 2. But if you do have the Orbit Neon and you want to turn the LEDs on and off, now we know how. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. 
So thanks again for watching and happy flying.